So let's look at a little, a few of the odd spellings. Here are some odd ones where we've got jur. You see that Z-H? That's jur. And the example I have is wager, wager. The English word wager, if written in pinyin, would be W-E-I-Z-H-I, wager. Or just by itself, jur. Wager, jur. That's Z-H-I, jur. Exactly like English. You don't have to struggle. You just have to think, oh, Z-H, that's an unusual we don't have that in English, do we? But that's what, how it sounds every time. Wager. And then the CH, similar to our ch, ch sound. So it's like in teacher. So if the word teacher in English, if written in pinyin, is T-I-C-H-I. Teacher. Teacher. Exactly the same. Same with kosher. Our kosher in English, if written in Chinese pinyin, would be K O U. S-H-I, kosher. Why did they use I? They should have put K-O-U-S-H-R, right? That would have been much more clear. And that's why I say it's odd. And I think this is partly, well, I won't explain why, but anyway, this is the way it is. We just have to get used to the I when it comes with j, ch, and sh is pronounced like an R. We just have to get used to it. It's odd. So then we've got the c, c and Z. So C-I is pronounced S. Z-I, Z. And I've got the two examples here. You can get it exactly right. So I don't know why you'd ever want to say pots on, but you might want to say the pots on, the pots on the, on the stove or something. Pots on in pinyin is P-A-C-A-N. <laughs> pots on, pots on. That's exactly the exact same sound. Pots on, pots on. And similarly for odds on, you probably have, uh, you're the odds on favorite to do something. If you were to, re to write odds on in pinyin, it would be A-Z-A-N, odds on. So let's go into the top here. Wager, teacher, kosher, pots on, and odds on. So this is just a way to, first of all, to reassure you that's the exact same sounds that we're using in English, and secondly, give you uh, a chance to see those, glance at them with your eye, so they won't look so strange when you see them later. Z-H-I, jir, C-H-I, chir, and so on. Now let's go to some of the endings that have odd spellings. The first here is I-U, it should have been written, written I-O-U, it rhymes with yo, it rhymes with opinion yo. Then U-I should have been written U-E-I, it rhymes with way. And Bopomofo, these are uh, odd pinyin because they should have been written with U-O. Sounds just the same as B-U-O, but they just for some reason, all three of these are like contractions. They just wanted to save a letter. It would have been easier for us as newcomers to the pinyin if they'd left all the letters in there, but I guess they just thought it was too many letters, so they shortened it. So that's how they shortened it. So this IU is always pronounced yo, UI is always pronounced way, and bo, po, mo, fo are trans, are, excuse me, are spoken the same as if they ended in uo, not just o. And finally, this e, the IAN, it looks like yan, but no, it's yen. YAN is pronounced just like the Japanese currency yen. And therefore, if there's a, a suffix with the ending or the final of a word ends in Y-A-N, it rhymes with yen. So, for example, sky is T-I-A-N. Looks like tian, but no, it's not. It's tian. They should have used an E there, but they didn't. So it's just one of those things that's odd, but you'll get used to it real fast. So I hope now you've already convinced that you can do this. Although I did keep one category of the so-called the new sounds that you've never seen before. And you might think, uh-oh, now it's going to get to the hard stuff. So let's take a look at the new sounds. So there's two, there's five altogether. So I have two slides. And the first two are these sounds that are y and y, y and y. And now this y, they use it in French and they use it in German. And I can remember when I was in a choir in college, we had to sing this U sound in the middle, the whole choir had to sing U <laughs> in some French or German word. I've forgotten what it was. And the choir director said, okay, everybody sing E, E. 
And then he said, now close your lips into a, a U. So it's E with your, with your tongue and your mouth, but U with your lips. Now listen, E. So don't change the inside, just E. And you hear that kind of ringing sound. E. So if you get it right, there's a little bit of e kind of ringing. So if you do e, it's a little bit like some some teenagers that see something gross, like teenage valley girls, and e they go e something's gross, right? That's almost the same sound. E. So when you're first learning, you can just start with e and put the rounded lips on it. E. But later, of course, you'll just be able to do it right away. It takes a little bit of exercise on your on your lips, really. E, e, e at the same time. Now the y is the same thing, y plus e on the end. It's e, which rhymes with me, me. Just an, a plain old e, the exact same e we have in egg or a million other English words. So it's y, 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 and y, so y and y. And the other is this group of three sounds. And this is going to be it. So it's yu and yu plus these three. And now let me say these three are ji, qi, and shi. Ji, qi, and shi. Don't get freaked out by this Q and X. So again, these are just odd ways. They didn't know what else to do. So they, they used these letters that <laughs> they thought weren't very busy or they hadn't already used them in, in the pinyin system. So they grabbed a Q and they grabbed an X because they weren't being used. So G is like Jeep, Chi is like cheap, and X is like sh in sheep. So they're kind of like lispy sheep, like she, chi, G, G, chi, she. So I hope you can can catch that. So they're lispy G, lispy chi, and lispy she. So that's that's it. Those are all the new sounds. Now we're going to practice a couple of these. You can put that G together with a U. It becomes G. So if you can practice this set that I have on this slide, G, Chu, Chu, because of the way that that U sounds, it, you can put the J, Q, and X with it, and it'll help your uh, tongue and lips get all worked into a good pattern and you'll be able to do it just right. Ju, chu, shu, yu, nu, lu. <laughs> and then when we do it together with the e on the end, it's ju, shu, chu, yu, nu, lu. Now, it doesn't sound like A. A lot of times I've found that students will want to put an A on the end of jue. They'll go jue, or xue becomes xue. No, it doesn't have any A on the end. Xue, xue, it's like me, or yes without the S. Ye without, <laughs> yes without the S <laughs> becomes just ye, ye. Not ye, ye. All right. Now, what I've got here is a Chinese alphabet song. Do you remember, I forget, if it was kindergarten or maybe first grade, you learned A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so do a lot of foreigners, kids do, when they're learning English. Or if they don't have an alphabet, when they learn the alphabet. Well, what I've done here is to take every combination of Chinese and put it into the alphabet song. If you can get the pronunciation of exactly all of the words in this song, you will not miss anything ever again. And so here it goes. I'm going to read it first and then I'll sing it. <laughs> it is not too much of a disaster. Are you ready? Ah, bien. Remember that bien is not bien because that's the one that's like yen, Japanese yen. Okay. Ah, bien, cai, duo, ar, fang, gong. He, yi, Jin, Kan, Liu, Mei, Nu, O, Peng, Qing, Ren, Suan, Tiao, Wu, Wei, Wa, 
xie, yue, zi, zhun, chi, shuang. Yong, yuan, jun, hao, guai, hao, liang. Xian, zai, wo, pin, yin, hun, bang. <laughs> now, the, it's all nonsense, really. It's, it's nonsense, just like A, B, C, D. It doesn't mean anything. And so it'll, it looks funny and sounds funny, but it does catch every variation, every spelling, mis, um, odd spelling, every easy spelling, and every new sound. So here it goes. Ready? Ah, bian cai duo ar fang gong he yi jin kan liu mei nu o peng qing ren suan tiao wu wei wa xie yue zi zhun chi shuang yong yuan jun hao guai hao liang Xian zai wo pin yin han bang. And there you have it. You can repeat that as many times you want as you want. And hopefully you just put it on pause and you can sing it to yourself. If you get these, you will be in good shape, I promise. Now there's one thing you might have noticed, which is that when you sing in Chinese, there are no tones. The tones is used up by the by the music, and so that's one reason why a lot of times in Chinese class we will use songs to learn pinyin because you don't have to think about both the pinyin and the tones at the same time. It's kind of relaxing, so that's one reason why I put all these song sounds in a song for you. So you're going to discover that you're going to catch it really really quickly. Mastering pinyin is like a habit. You learn it by doing it, not just by you know, listening to one video. But this does have all the basic information you need. You won't need to listen to it over and over. You will be able to just go into the classes and you can refer to some of the stuff in here when you need it. Now, typically, pinyin includes tone marks. So it looks like this line I have here at the top. Zong ren man da fang. Zong ren man da fang. So you've got... Chinese, you've got the different tones, uh, marks that look like you see there. Ma, 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 ma. If you don't have any mark at all, just M-A, that people won't know if you mean ma or ma, ma, or ma. They mean four different things. Ma is mother. Ma, rope. Ma is horse. Ma is scold. So you've got to use tone marks when we're normally communicating. But we don't need to when we're just in class and learning. Now, you might find if you're ever taking notes and you want to write uh, by hand, you can just put the marks like you see there, the stroke or the up or the down uh, marks. But what if you're typing and you find it's not very convenient to type in tone marks? There is a way to do it. But what I do a lot of times is I'll just use numbers. And these are the standard numbers for the tones. We'll have a separate video on tones. So when you're uh, also, it's important for you to know that when you're typing, like in the chat window or an email, you don't need the tones to type. You just use the pinion all by itself. All right. So let's sum up with our learning strategy. The tips for remembering Mandarin are to use tools that are available. You have the alphabet song that I gave you, and I'm going to demonstrate the tone game in a minute. And there is a PDF of a pinion chart. For you to download right next to this video and I do suggest that you keep it for reference because it is kind of handy. Then you'll want to use a dictionary. I've done a demo separately of the Playco dictionary where you can uh, learn how to look words up and every time you do you'll get more practice using your pinyin. But obviously those tools aren't going to be sufficient in and of themselves. You will need to practice and that's what our Vico classes are going to be for. And the more you can type in Chinese, that will help uh, using the chat. So you will need to keep improving. You will master the sounds and the spelling, and you'll get better and better and closer to the bullseye. So that is our awesome conclusion. Welcome to our class. We wish you to have great sounding Chinese. 
it really helped me when I learned pronunciation well. Uh, people just thought, oh, wow, you sound great. They just thought, they thought I must be a genius because I learned how to speak properly. So you're going to sound great and you're going to make a lot of friends and they will like you. They'll respect you if you speak well. So let's work on it. Get your opinion down solid and then in the class you will be really happy with your results. So see you in the next video.